So let's look at the same situation. Beowulf traveling along, sending a light flash out to two clocks. Let's look at that situation in a different reference frame, from Anastasia's reference frame. So Anastasia will be at rest with respect to Beowulf, just like the camera is as well. So Anastasia and you are going to watch Beowulf and his clocks move, and to Anastasia, the clocks and Beowulf will be moving. They won't be at rest. So let's take a look at the situation using a space-time diagram in Anastasia's reference frame. So this was the space-time diagram in Beowulf's reference frame, in a reference frame that's moving along with these moving clocks. Let's consider the same uh, two events, L and R, the left light flash hitting the left clock and the right light flash hitting the right clock. Let's consider those events in Anastasia's frame, a frame that's at rest with respect to those clocks. Okay, so here's Anastasia's frame. And in the at rest frame, in Anna's frame, she sees Beowulf not stationary, but moving to the right. And then the right clock is moving right along with Beowulf, and so it's also moving to the right. And the left clock, these are all moving together, is also moving to the right. Okay, so let me label these. Okay, so everything is nicely labeled there. So now what about the light flashes? What do those look like to um, Anastasia in this reference frame? So here's the thing. The speed of light is the speed of light. Anastasia is going to observe the speed of light to be um, well, the, the speed of light. You might think, oh, well, this light beam left Beowulf and Beowulf was already moving to the right at a certain speed, so, so um, Anastasia would see the light flash going even faster. But as Einstein is telling us, that's actually not how light works. In every reference frame, we observe the speed of light to be the speed of light. So that means that this is going to be the speed of light. And that's going to be the speed of light. So these are the world lines of the light flashes, just like they were here. And they're moving with a slope of 1, just like light always does on any space-time diagram, because the speed of light is always measured to be 1 in any reference frame. All right, so now we have um, our events. Event L, that's when the light flash hits the left clock. And then event R, when the light flash hits the right clock. So we can read the space-time coordinates, read off the space-time coordinates of these two events. That's what we can do with space-time diagrams. So let's do that. So this value on the t-axis, that would be what we'll call tl. And this value, would be TR. And so notice that TR is greater than TL. So I'll write that here, I guess. TR is greater than TL. That means that Anastasia observes event R as happening after uh, event L, a later time, a larger time. Another way to say this is the interval, the coordinate time interval according to Anastasia between these two events, is greater than zero. So Beowulf observed that these two events happen at the same time. The difference between them is zero. Anastasia has a very different conclusion. She says, actually, R happened after L, 
And you're crazy if you think these two things happened at the same time. All right, so what do we conclude from this? So what we conclude is that coordinate time is frame dependent. In Galilean relativity, time equals time. Everybody would agree on the time that an event occurred. That's not the case here. Um, so, again, uh, Beowulf would look at these two times and say they happen at the same time, and so the time interval is zero. Anastasia does not agree and says that um, these times, that the time between these events is greater than zero. This happens after that one. 